What's good everyone? My name is Hazel and this is my first time doing this so bear with me but I had a lot of questions about this so today we're going to talk about workflow using the Nectar Impact MIDI controller series. So this is the Nectar Impact LX and I went with the 49 keys just because it fits best on my desk. The reason why I chose this specific keyboard is because Nectar focuses on integrating their MIDI controllers with DAWs and for me that's what I needed. Coming from an MPC background I just wanted to get a little bit more tactile and it kind of enhances my workflow because I don't have to touch the mouse every two seconds if I'm gonna just sketch an idea or something. I like this keyboard for it's just square and simple profile um, and in my opinion in its price range we're talking about $200 it has the best touch key that I've tested um, in the market right now it also comes with like rubberized pads uh, super sensitive and a couple of faders and controllers that are completely assignable directly from the DW so I'm gonna jump straight into this project Myself, I'm using Studio One Pro 3, but it works with any DAW in the market. And so I'm just gonna open this preset and show you a little bit how I use this. So here we are on PreSonus Studio One Pro 3, my DAW of choice. And I'm just gonna open here this preset that I made for the purpose of this video. Um, which by the way, I'm not going to make a long video and I'm not going to show you the whole process that I use to make a beat. This is just to show you how I use the Nectar Impact LX and, uh, you know, show you a little bit about the shortcuts and how well it integrates with DW and stuff like that. And how I step away from the mouse while well, I'm actually doing that. So I'm just going to leave my mouse cursor here somewhere. And then you see by yourself. So going back to the beginning of the of my track here and I wanted to show you first the mixer so I can call the mixer here directly from the keyboard and I have a little, a little dot here excuse me that appears on top of my mixer button here and when I'm on mixer mode all the controls are automatically assigned to control the mixer which is you say it's pretty logic, but you know, I've had a couple of keyboards before that don't even do that. Um, so you can control the mixer from here, you can close the mixer. And you have the same thing for the, your VSTs. So for example, I'm opening here my, my Impact, which is my drum VST um, on PreSonus Studio One. And I can change the tracks. So as I change tracks, it changed VST because I'm on Studio One too. But if you're on another DW, you would switch tracks and then call your VST and it would open the VST that, that you want. Um, some v I know that some DWs just open a couple of different windows per VST, but this one just opens one actual window with the little tabs here at the top that allows you to browse through. So as you change tracks. Um, so if I'm on like an instrument mode here, I have the sound. I can actually change the patch of my VST directly from here too. But I can also change uh, the envelope of my VST from, if I'm just make sure that I'm on instrument mode here. I'm on a different VST. Let's try this one, for example. Changing the envelope. But I can also do some. That's very cool. And I haven't even touched the mouse yet. And I'm already like finding ideas and, you know, once I find my ideas, say for example that I'm here. Oh, let me actually tell you about the, the drums, for example. Um, my drums are here, see, because they're on C1 to D1. But 
Um, it's not actually C1 to D1, but that's what it says on the on the VST there. But um, I like my drums on the right side, you know. And on some other keyboards that I've had before, you had actually to browse through the octaves until you get here to actual C1. Which is something really cool that you can do with the Nectar is that you can assign the pads directly to any key that you want on the keyboard. So let's say, for example, I just click here on Pad Learn, and P1 will be Pad One, logically. And P1 is blinking, so any key that you will press from now will be assigned to this actual pad. So if I go P2 and I send my hi-hat here and P3, my snare here, that's it, as easy as that. So now what do I do? I have all my access to all my instruments and I have all my things, you know, set up my sounds, I'm, I've modulated my sounds, and I've assigned all my sounds. Now what a, the next step is to record, so I'm just gonna move around here um, and set my cue points, my, my cue points, I mean my loop points. Uh, so for example, I'll put my left here, and then I will go two bars further, and just put my right point here, so this will be my actual loop. Press the loop mode, let me close here this VST so that you can see better. And then I have my click on, I can turn it on and off directly from the keyboard again. And I can start recording. Um, yeah, so there you go. I just want this little bit here. So I will just set my points here. That's it, and then I can start recording, you know. I can uh, do all my work on my little loop here. If I wanna add something, I just can create, I can just create something here a little bit further or whatever, you know. I'm more like the type of uh, guy that likes to sketch like little bits and then I stitch them up together. But coming from um, an MPC background, you know, for me having full control directly from the keyboard like this for me it's so much easier because i don't have to think about doing this and that and all that bullshit you know let me sorry for the bad words but it's just uh it's just straightforward you turn on your your, your dw and you start working and doing some, some stuff you know all you have to do is create your preset first and then you can start working you know uh, get all your favorite instruments all ready and then you can just like browse through the sounds from your vsds and stuff of course, if you want to open some new instruments, uh, you have to use the mouse, but it's not like you spent like all your time in the mouse and just doing clickety clicks, you know. Some people like that, I don't. And that's pretty much it, man. That's, uh, that's all I wanted to show you, um, the shortcuts on the Nectar Impact LX and how well they work for me. And I hope they work for you too. So if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. I've I never really made videos like this, and I don't know if I will make further uh, in the future videos, videos like this. Um, but if you're interested about gear, just let me know, and I'll, I might make some more. You know, I just don't want to make videos about like the whole process of making beats, because you know, I think everyone has its unique way, and it should stay like that. But talking about gear is fine, so let me know, and I'll make um, a couple of more videos about gear and stuff if you guys are interested. So let me know and. There you go. Thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next time. Peace.